Now, if you look at what prayer does, so if we look at it from a sort of diagrammatic point of perspective, here we have God's soul with masculine and feminine qualities. Here we have our half of the soul. So let's just draw it. If I'm male or something, let's just draw it like my half of the soul connected to my bodies, my spirit body and my physical body. It's my soul that was given the gift of will. So it's not my intellect. Right? It's not my mind, as people will tell you. It's your soul that's given the gift of will. It's how your soul uses its will as to whether it's praying or not. And the way it needs to exercise its will to pray is to have a longing, a sincere and pure, so let's define it more fully, a sincere, pure longing to receive love from God. All right? And when your soul is using its will in that regard, in other words, when you're having a passionate desire within yourself as a feeling, in that regard, you're praying. Right in that moment. But as soon as it's not a passionate desire anymore and it's just words coming out of your head, you're not praying anymore. And as soon as you connect to the passionate desire again, you're praying again. And as soon as you disconnect from that passionate desire and you're just thinking things, you're not praying anymore. Does that make sense? And it can be as instant as that, switching in and out of prayer. So a lot of people who say they're praying, from an intellectual perspective, they're maybe stating a rosary or they may be having some kind of uh, our Father who, art is in, who, art, who, <laughs> who is in heaven um, uh, prayer to God, but it's not coming from the heart, that's not a prayer. From God's perspective, that's not a prayer. A prayer is something that engages God's soul from your soul. And that has to be feelings, longings that have developed within your soul that are pure in nature, not driven by addictions even. So even a prayer that goes something like, I want you to come and fix up my life. Well, God's not going to answer prayers like that. And, and, and while that might be coming from your soul, there are certain prayers that God won't answer because... To, to do that would have to take away some of God's laws and God's not ever going to do that. So if you want God to fix up your life, right, then that's not a very sincere prayer. And the reason why it's not sincere is because you're responsible for what you created in your life. So wanting God to fix it up is not very responsible and God won't respond to those kind of prayers. God will help you work through the issues as to why you created those things in your life if you sincerely have a longing to know. So that's what prayer is. And, and so therefore you could say prayer is the greatest expression of mankind's will. Does that make sense? So the greatest expression of your will is desiring to actually pray or to define it, to have a sincere and pure longing to receive love from God, to allow the transformation of your soul by the receiving of love from God. That is the thing that will cause your transformation. And we've been talking about addictions and fear and other things uh, earlier in the day, but those particular things are the things that prevent your transformation. This is the thing that engages your transformation. So prayer is the thing that engages your transformation of the soul, and the things that prevent your transformation of the soul are fear, addictions, using your will out of harmony with love, rejecting truth, rejecting faith, rejecting humility. They are the things that prevent you from changing. But the thing that actually changes you is God's love entering your soul. And in fact, I feel the majority of us need to learn to just give up trying to change ourselves and just focus on changing these things so that we can receive God's love into our soul. If we focused on that, we'd have a very much more productive change in our lives as a result. Does that answer, Denny? Go on. Then uh, does intention precede the 
will to pray? I mean, where does intention fit in that topography? Yeah, good question. Uh, people have asked that during the break. Will engages so many things. So if you look at all of the things that are engaged in will, there are literally quite a number of qualities that are a part of will. Desire is one of the qualities that are a part of will. Intention is another. Intention is really future desire. Does that make sense? You don't necessarily have it now, but you want to have it. It's an intention, and that's a part of will. Does that make sense? So will encompasses uh, or, or um, involves so many things. Your desire for prayer is all about the exercise of your will. Your intention to change is all about the exercise of your will. So these qualities, desire, intention and so forth, are all a part of this beautiful gift that God gave you, which is the gift of how you're going to express yourself how you're going to desire change and so forth. So it depends. You know, some people desire to be harmful, but that's still a part of their will. Some people have the intention to be harmful even though they can't quite do it. That's part of their will. And in fact, any desire or intention that is out of harmony with love has consequences associated with it, in fact. So you can just intend to do something without doing it that's out of harmony with love and that has a negative consequence on your soul. Right? You can just intend to do it without actually carrying the deed out and it will have a negative consequence on your soul. And God's created it this way so that we have feedback systems that show us through these laws that God's created what creates our own unhappiness, what creates the unhappiness of others and, and what the underlying causes are are all about how we exercise our will either in or out of harmony with love. So desire, intention, is there any other things you could think of that are a part of will uh, in terms of ideas or concepts that are really a part of will? Volition. Sorry? Volition. Like will and action. Um, sorry, I didn't get the word. Volition. V-O-L-I-T-I-O-N. Volition. What? Like will, will in action. Is that what volition means? Yeah. Because it's not my understanding of the word. Well, how do you understand it? It's the opposite of will in action of my, what I understood. Can I just rub that out for a bit because I'm not sure about the meaning of that word. <laughs> yeah. Passion. Very good. Longing. Can I add to that? Can we? Creativity. Sorry? Creativity. Creativity is about will, yeah. Enthusiasm, yeah. Enthusiastic. Openness, a, cho a choice to have your soul open, yeah. So you could even say choice is about how you use your will, couldn't you? Uh, can you see there's quite a lot involved with will? That's why it's such an important thing to learn about, how we use our will. Because there's a lot of things there that are very positive. Or, or, by the way, the interesting thing about will is that it can be used completely negative or completely positive or anything in between. That's the interesting thing about will. If we understand the relationship between will and pain, it would help us a lot. Do you know what I mean by that? If we exercise our will out of harmony with love and truth, we automatically cause pain for ourselves and others. Whether we are sensitive to that pain or not, we automatically create it. And if we use our will in harmony with love and truth, we automatically create pleasure for ourselves and other people, whether we are sensitive to it or not. Right? And our own emotional sensitivity depends on our humility. In other words, you'll feel it if you're humble. But if you choose to not be humble, you won't feel it. So if you choose to act out of harmony with love and truth, and also you choose to not be humble, you won't feel the results of acting out of harmony with love and truth. You have to choose to be humble before you'll feel the results. And that's feel positive or negative results, in fact. Any person who's trying to shut down one group of emotions, which is all about humility, will shut down entire groups of emotions. 
It's impossible for you to experience pain, or let's put it a different way, it's impossible for you to, to experience pleasure if you're trying to shut down your pain. You will become desensitized to all emotion if you do that. And that's how God created you, to be open and sensitive to all emotion. A child's like that, that's what we need to be like. We need to be open and sensitive to all emotion. When we're open and sensitive to all emotion, which is humility, when we use our will in harmony with love and truth, we'll feel the pleasure of it. We'll feel the pleasure of it, like internally. It'll be just like, we'll be overwhelmed with the joy of it inside of ourselves. When we use our will out of harmony with love and truth, and we're sensitive, we'll feel the pain of it. And the pain's telling us, wow, you did something out of harmony with love and truth. That feels pretty bad. So you know sometimes the guilty conscience feeling that we get, those kind of feelings, the painful type of emotional feelings, that's all telling us when we've used our will out of harmony with love and truth, if we're sensitive to it. Right? Now, even the average murderer is sensitive to using their will out of harmony with love and truth when it comes to their mur murdering somebody, ironically. But usually they're only sensitive after the fact. Right? What we need to learn to do is become sensitive before the fact, before we act. Even considering the action, the intention. So when we use our will to even consider an action that's out of harmony with love, if we're really sensitive, in other words, if we're really humble, we won't do it. Because we'll feel the pain we would create if we had done it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So God made this beautiful system to help us understand these basic things, but also to help us grow in harmony with love and also experience pleasure all of our life rather than just momentary pleasure at different points in our life that, that, and then we have a lot of pain. You know? And the average person's life on earth, unfortunately, is that we have sort of times of pleasure. Usually those times aren't very long. And we have a lot of drudgery, <laughs> generally. And that's because we've desensitized to anything, generally. And then we have some pain. That's the average person's life. And the reason why we have that pain is because of the choices that have been made, either by ourselves or others, out of harmony with love and truth. And that's God's feedback system. So prayer the greatest, is the greatest uh, po po uh, positive choice that you can make regarding the use of your will because it has the greatest effect on your soul what it allows to occur is it allows love from a being that created you to enter you that wasn't there in the first place so this whole concept that people have nowadays that you know love already exists within our soul we've just got to recognize it i don't agree with that at all i've observed in the spirit world for many years people souls who have no love in them at all and they've had to exercise their will to receive it and so once we exercise our will to pray and receive this love this love can enter us and transform us that is, so therefore it becomes the greatest thing you could do with your will right? but it's still an expression of your will so that's why i haven't included it in the list here because it's, it's an expression of one part in particular of your will. 